Hi, I'm Teresa with PotomacBeats.eu and PotomacBeats.com and today we are going to learn some basic techniques of bead embroidery. We are going to make these statement rings with Luna Soft cabochons in the middle. Uh, the Luna Soft cabochons we will bezel with peyote stitch and then I will show you how to make different embellishments around the actual cabochon. One ring will have the Preciosa cup chain around the cabochon and the other one will have 4 mm check faceted rounds together with some 15 O's. So if you want to follow me and learn how to make these rings, go below the video where you find in the description box all the links to all the items you need to purchase to make these rings. So today I want to show you how to make a ring using the bead embroidery technique. It will be similar in the way that uh, both of the rings will be uh, using the Luna Soft cabochons. They will be in the middle. I'm planning to use uh, this uh, lime green and this uh, watermelon color. And uh, one of those rings will have around the cabochon five polished beads and the other one will have Preciosa cup chain. And both of them will be bezeled with uh, Mayoki seed beads, both 15 O's and 11 O's. And um, uh, for the ring component I chose uh, these bases. So, I cut myself a piece of beading foundation big enough to uh, have my cabochon sit in the middle and also big enough uh, if you like picture the bezeling around with the Miyuki seed bead so it will go somewhere here and, the, and then the fire polish bead so this is more than enough space for me to work. Uh, I just glue it down and then I will bezel it so no excessive glue please it can't show around like here because then it's difficult with your needle uh, to work with your needle because it can't usually go through the glue. For the bezeling uh, you'll be doing the bezel with the peyote stitch. We will start from the back and work it up, uh, work our way up. So I am using size 10 needle and a beading a thread in similar colors to my chosen beads. And so we will start. So go from the back to the front with your needle and somewhere close to the cabochon so it's basically touching it. Now we will be working with the method 11 O's crystal vitrile. So pick two and go back to the beading foundation and the distance between the thread and the, and the needle is uh, long enough to have those two beads to sit perfectly next to each other. It's better to have like large, no, not larger gaps, but it's better to have uh, less uh, less beads around the whole cabochons than more, uh, because this is like the first row, and then when you are attaching more rows. Uh, sometimes there might be too many uh, starting, uh, like too big of a starting number and the beads then like slide out and slide off and it's just not firm enough. So start with less but the perfect number you will see in time basically. The more cabochons you bezel the better you will get at it. And now we got this pair and I want to go up. I want to go up through the beading foundation between these two beads. 
preferably between the two beads and also between your beads and the cabochon. And of course there is a knot on the, on the thread. But hey, I managed. And now go through the second bead. And pull. And you will be doing this around the whole cabochon. So pick two beads. Then you can also slide them down and measure measure the distance, but I can already see it. So leave a gap for two beads like this. See, I, I, they are not sitting that tightly next to each other because I know that's like the best. Now I'm going back up between these two. And again through the second one. So continue like this until you bezel the whole cabochon. I'm adding last two beads. So it doesn't matter how many beads you have around but it has to be an even number it's peyote it's tubu uh, tubular peyote so even number so that's why we are working with pairs so i have my even number of beads done this is the last bead i added and now I will go through the next one, which is the first bead we added. So now I can start adding a second layer. Now it's a, a regular peyote, so I'm taking one eleven o, still the same color. I'm skipping this bead and I'm going to the third bead and pull again one bead skipping the next one going to the third one so now it looks like this Again, another 11 nose, skip one bead, going to the next one. We are skipping the beads, uh, we went twice through and going with our needle to the beads we, uh, which weren't attached twice. So they can move uh, slightly up from the beading foundation. So the peyote is there. So continue like this until you have the full row. So this row is finished. This is the this is the last bead of the row. So to jump up to the next one, I will just go also through the first bead of previous row. Oh, sorry, of this <laughs> row we just added. And now I'm going to switch from the crystal vitriol method to the regular one, the shiny one. But still I will be working with the 11 O's. This will be our uh, last row of 11 O's. So always pick one 11 O and go to the crystal method one we added in, in this row. And it's basic peyote, so continue around the whole cabochon. Then we will add one more row of beads and the bezeling will be done. So continue like this, adding beads one by one and then we will switch to 15 O's. 
this this row was much quicker so I'm done and to jump up to the next row I will also go through the first bead we added in this row now I'm going to switch to the 15 ohms this is Crystal Labrador Full Milky and I will be doing the same picking up one bead and going to the next one again simple peyote but using smaller beads will close up the bezeling around the cabochon make it a bit tighter and making sure that the cabochon won't fall out uh, from the actual bezel so continue adding the beads one by one and probably this will be our last row sometimes uh, it there needs to be like two of those for those 15 ohms it really depends on the shape and the size of the cabochon for me it usually works like this uh, one 15 ohm row uh, like which which is the last one yeah so continue adding the beads and then we will continue my row is done I think this is uh, this is how I like it I won't be adding any other 15 rows but what I usually do to strengthen this last row a bit Without the beads, I go through the 15 0 and the 11 0 around the whole cabochon, just basically going through these last two rows, which really tightens up the work. It, it, uh, it will prevent the bezel from opening because in time uh, the beading thread can uh, can lose its strength and you can sometimes see the thread showing between the beads so I like to do this Sometimes it's even better than adding another row of 15 ohms to tighten up the bezel. So go like this around the whole cabochon. Um, I just hope I will find a place where I started. <laughs> I'm done with bezeling the cabochon itself and we will uh, switch uh, to the fire polished beads but first we need to get down to the beading foundation uh, my thread is still long enough so I will continue working with it also this is beading embroidery so it's very easy to start a new thread so don't worry if you don't have long enough or you can basically work with a, uh, with a piece of thread that is long enough uh, for you to work with it comfortably so uh, my thread is going out of these uh, of this uh, 11 o bead so now we want to go through these uh, matted beads they are gonna lay down through the whole bezel it doesn't matter through which beads the only point of this is that the thread won't be visible so now I am down in this bead and I will go through the beading foundation to the other side. Now it's clean from the back it looks like this if you want to see it it's very clean as well. Uh, usually if you want you want to see how precise people are in their work or design you should look at the other side because if the other side is a mess it really says something about the the author or the designer so keep tr uh, keep uh, keep trying uh, to have even the back side nice and pretty you never know when it's gonna be like good for you 
So now we will be switching to these uh, four millimeter fire polished beads and we will be putting them around the cabochon. So get to the other side. Doesn't matter really where, it just needs to be really close to the beads. Now take one fire polished bead, slide it down, position it nicely so it's lying nice and tight to the bezel and go down to the beading foundation and pull. Now return back behind the bead it, uh, and go up through the beading foundation right next to the bead and go again through the fire polished bead. Add another one, slide it down Position it nicely so it likes, lies close to the first bead and also close to, close to the bezel and go through the foundation down. Position it again. Sometimes they have a tendency to stick this end up so push it down and Return back to the to the side behind this bead and go through this bead again. And like this you will continue around the whole cabochon. So I'm adding another one. I position it go down go back up between these two beads and through this fire polished bead I just edit don't forget to pull tight so there's no thread showing and also since we will be adding more beads between the fire polished beads try to keep the tension really tight so there's no thread showing so continue like this and then we'll be adding more 15 o's we will start between the fire polished beads closer to the to the cabochon so i am going between these two fire polished beads if you can see that right between them and near the cabochon so now i will pick up five 15 holes and i will go over the gap between them and go down to the beading foundation right next to the fire polished beads and pull. See now there is a little ring from the 15 nose. Uh, here we are working with five, maybe it could take even six. The number is random, all you need to do is that uh, be sure that this ring is not too tight so it's not splitting the fire polished beads that much and at the same time it's not too like loose and uh, there should be no thread showing between these 15 O's. So you can try five because this works for me with this uh, size combination of beads. Or you can, because sometimes you just need to test it. So you can use six and then take it down if it's too much or use uh, do five and then you realize you need six so you need to play it a bit so but I think five for us is okay so now I'm going forward 
again I'm going up through the beading foundation between the two fire polished beads and between them and the cabochon. I'm picking five 15 o's. And I'm again going over to the outside, making another little bridge or ring. And this I will do around the whole cabochon between each five point piece. Like this. Now each five polished bead has a little 15 ohm Yuki seed bead bridge over it. It looks like this from the behind, and this is the front. So now the actual embroidery is finished. Of course, you can add more rows here if you want to make a pendant or a brooch, but I think that this size is a proper statement ring and I don't want to make it bigger. So now it's time for sharp scissors. I like to use the one, the scissors with curved, curved edge because most of the time I'm making something uh, which is round. Circles all the time basically, even with soutage, so I'm a big fan of scissors with curved uh, edges. Now what we want to do is to cut off this excessive beading foundation and then we will be uh, covering up this back side. I have uh, artificial leather here ready for it. So I chose this silver one and then we will be adding uh, more beads along the edges which will connect the beading foundation and the uh, artificial leather. So now it's the tricky part because you need to cut off only the excessive part and, dot, mm, and not cut the threads here and also not like undercut the beads. That's also not what you want to do. So when you are cutting the beading foundation uh, you can cut it a bit like don't cut it that much because you can always cut it again, not the other way. So how I do it is I, I'm gently touching this uh, with the scissors and the beads. The scissors are basically leaning on the beads and just going along. I'm also constantly checking the other side. So not to cut any threads there. So take your time, be patient and cut along the cabochon. See there's quite a lot of beading foundation showing still, but this is fine, I can cut it again. This is also something that will go easier for you when you've done some embroidery. You won't be that scared <laughs> to cut these things. So, I feel like there's too much. Also, get ready to the Cutting will make a mess on your beading mat. And I want to cut a, like a millimeter around more. Because it's, I don't think it's super bad when too much of the beading foundation is showing. Because when you look at it, you think it's there, but you can't be really like 100% sure because you're not focusing on it. You're focusing on the on the shiny beads. 
so I don't mind a bit foundation showing. Just make sure that you are making a nice circle so it looks nice in the end. Don't cut any beads or threads. Make it nice and round and even. Just check it once or twice more. Yeah, and I think this is this is okay for me. So as you can see there's plenty of plenty of beading foundation still basically there's a lot of space to cut more but i'm not going to do this so don't don't be afraid if you work along the tutorial you should have enough space to do that as well and if you can see when you look straight uh, from the top there's like nothing showing so this is what you want so this is our front done now we need to do the back the back, as I said, will be the artificial leather. I chose silver to go with the silver beads. So you can cut directly a similar shape, but uh, I had a small piece here and it's, and it's useful. So now you want to apply glue on this side, um, almost to the edges, like leave out like a one millimeter around the edge so because you will be stitching there and it's difficult to go with the um, with the needle through the glue i will be using the e6000 also you can use other fa your basically your favorite jewelry um, making glue or glue for fabrics because this is fabric and this is fabric so we can use that as well uh, you don't have to put that much there just a tiny bit because it's fabrics and it will just hold perfectly together so I usually use other glue but I can't find it currently so I will just open this E6000 which I have here and which will also be using later so there is it you can use toothpick you can also like push a bit on a piece of paper i will try to apply it directly so just a few touches here and there And that should be it. Yeah, this is perfectly fine and enough. I will just close it quickly. And then position it in the center of your leather or other backing material you like to use. And leave it quickly dry for a bit and then we will be working for the more before we start stitching we need to cut the excessive uh, leather this time so I'll be doing the same now it's easier because you just follow precisely the shape of the beading foundation so I will cut around the cabochon Be sure that uh, the edges are nice and even, there are no corners because then when there are corners the, the beads are a bit wavy and it's not that pretty. So now it looks like this. And now you will go to the stitching and connecting these two layers with beads. So I have threaded um, thread which has a knot in the end uh, it doesn't uh, really matter which thread you are uh, using just not wildfire just some regular beading thread 
and it's great usually to work with the color that, that is matching the color of your of your packing material so I chose gray to match my silver backing all right here it really doesn't matter where you start because it's circle but uh, so your first stitch will be going here so in between the these two fabrics go from the center outside basically to the back there's the knot I will just push it inside and the stitch is approximately like one and a half millimeters under the edge like this now pick up 1110, 115 and 1110. You'll be doing the slightly decorative edge. So in between each 11 uh, there will be 115 I chose to work with the matted crystal vitriol and the uh, crystal labrador full again. So now slide down the beads. Then it doesn't matter if you go right or left, just be sure to work as much comfortable as you would be. And now stitch through the beading foundation, through the leather, right next to the first stitch. Basically on the first stitch there will be sitting the first 11 -0, and on the second stitch will be sitting the second 11 0 so there will be no gap between them like this sorry for the long thread but um, usually it's better to have it a bit longer so you would do this in in one long stitch and now go up through the second 11 0 and pull so with the f with the beginning we added three beads now you'll be adding only two so pick 115 0 and 111 0 go from the from the beading foundation through the leather right next to this 11 0 Basically from top down again. Okay, this will be a nightmare to be honest. Because it was the end of the spool, so everything is too wavy. Yes. Now if you can see it, so go back again through the 11 0. You just add it. Don't forget to pull and you will repeat this around the whole circle so we'll be adding 115-0 and 111-0 at a time your stitches should be very short very small and precise and pretty and basically the smaller the better so continue like this and then we will at the, at the ring. Last pair of beads is missing, so I am adding it right now. So 15 0 and 11 0. So last 11 0 to fill in, in this gap. Then we need to connect this first one and last bead, so pick only one 15 0 and go through the first bead we added, then from the back to the front, basically copying the way of the first stitch, go through the 
leather and through the beading foundation to the top. And because this first bead was stitched only from the back, you need to stitch it also from the front. So now go through this bead, through the 11 -0. And now the stitching is complete. So all the beads are in their places. See how it's embellished a bit more. You can leave out the 15 O's and just continue and just work without them. Just adding the uh, 11 O's one by one, but this is a bit more fancy. Now all I need to do is to uh, Finish the thread somewhere tied off, so I will go, I will go through the 15 o and also through this next 11 o which will get me uh, here close to the beading foundation. There I will go with my uh, needle under under the stitch which is there under the 11 o I'll make a loop and go through the loop two or three times and carefully pull so it's invisible can push it down there and now I want to get away from the knot so I will go through the beading foundation somewhere so it's invisible and cut the thread so no loose ends showing no knots showing that's what we want so this is our ring we just need to glue this component here and there will be our ring you can make earrings like this uh, brooches like this when when you are making earrings you just make a small beaded loop here and you can just hang it on a, like ear wire or anything you can add other components anything I am pretty sure we will make something together in some of um, some of my other tutorials. This this time I just wanted to make the ring. So the last thing we need to do is a rather crucial thing, and that's the gluing of the component. So I will again use the E6000 because it's transparent. So you can use anything you want which is suitable for like metal and fabrics together so the most important thing is to glue it into the middle so you can make a little dot in here like in the center but i think i will manage so as i said use transparent glue because yeah, it won't be visible because you'll be wearing the ring, but you you want it to be pretty. So first, I will apply a little bit of glue so so I can just stick there the the component just to basically hold it there in one place. And this was the first little drop. Now I will make sure that everything is in the center as I want. And I will use a toothpick to like spread the excessive glue. And now I will wait a bit so it dries. And then I will add more glue and secure secure the, the component in its place more tightly. I 
think I'm ready to add more glue. Again, I will help myself with the, with the toothpick. So I'll be adding glue on the component. And I'll be spreading it with the glue to fill in these little petals because the ring looks like the ring looks like a flower slightly a messy job but it needs to be done you can do it also like you push some of the glue on the toothpick can add a thicker thicker layer here sorry how how do we focus just add enough so you are sure that the the component will stay there preferably forever but at the same time try to make it as pretty as you can so nothing too excessive and try to spread the glue so there are no like edges and everything is in one layer. I also think some glues has some glues have syringes which can help you to apply the glue itself. So I think this might be enough. So I'm closing the glue, putting away the toothpick. Last checkings, maybe I will do this. It's not like super amazing, but it, you won't see it basically. And since it's transparent, it's pretty fine. And now I will leave it dry. And when it's dry, it's basically done. So, last few checkings that there's no glue anywhere on the on the ring itself. And that's it. So this is the first version, the version with fire polished beads. Now I'll be making the second one with the cup chain so we will do the same in the beginning i will bezel the cabochon with different colors but you already know this procedure and then we will switch the the fire polish beads for the cup chain which of course i will show you so let's move to the other color combination and to the other other materials I put away the silver and the green beads and I switched to this golden pink color version. Again I glued down the cabochon. Uh, I cut uh, beading foundation large enough so it has like almost centimeter on each side of space free for beading. And I will be doing the same, so I will start with the uh, golden 11 rows and do the basic row and the second row and I will switch to these and then to the 15 rows, so exactly the same as we did here with this ring and so I have my golden piece of thread ready with the knot at the end and I will start doing the bezeling again so I am 
uh, going from the back to the front with the needle. I'm picking two 11 holes, going a bit left so I can place the two 11 holes. I will go back up between them and again through the second one. It's really the same. This is just for repetition. Again, two 11 holes a bit to the left. Back up between them. And through the second one. So I will do this around the whole cabochon, then go up one row and still use these golden 11 holes. Then again up one row, use these pink 11 holes, and then up one row and use these um, use these uh, hot pink milky 15 holes. So continue like this until we <laughs> meet again, and instead of the fire polish beads, we'll be adding the cup chain. The bezeling is finished. Now I am going down through the beads. To get to the beading foundation. Yeah. Then go down again to the beading foundation. So this is how it looks from the back side. Now we will be adding the cup chain. This is Preciosa cup chain SS, and the crystals are size SS12. I am using the gold plated version with crystal crystals. And our goal is to sew, sew the crystals around the, around the cabochon. So I have here 20 centimeter piece and this will be more than enough for me so I kept it longer and I will cut it accordingly when we are sewing the, the actual bezel so we will be sewing the crystals uh, thanks to these links between them so I will now go up somewhere close to the beads. Now, somewhere close to the bezel, put the cup chain. And now, go over the cup chain, over the link between those crystals with your needle. The one is tricky because everything is moving, but just wait for it. Yes, of course it's slide away, but it's okay because it's just a loop. Yes, it's there. See, now it's not that moving anymore. So that's the first. Now slide the crystals together. And go with your needle. Close to the bezel and up. Again. Try to move the crystals so they are sitting tightly next to each other, so the link is not visible. And sew over the link. And pull tight. And the same. Move the next one closer to the second one. Go up with your needle close to the bezel and so over the link pull tightly and continue like this so I'm moving the 
fourth crystal you can hold it with your nail and then I'm going up with the needle over to the link and down So now I have four crystals sitting next to the kabosha. So continue like this until you have the whole kabosha bezeled with the cup chain. I have only one last crystal to attach. I cut the chain and I knew how many crystals I will need. So I'm doing the last one. So like we did, go up next to the bezel, over the link, down to the beading foundation and pull. Now all the crystals are sitting next to each other. And this is how you attach the chain. This is how it looks like from the other side. And now you'll be at, uh, doing one more row with uh, 11 ohm milky seed beads to cover up the sides of the chain and it will be uh, the last touch on this upper part of the embroidery so the last row we will be adding is a row made of these gold 11 o's so go up through the beading foundation so your thread is now uh, pointing up right next to the right next to the chain take two 11 o's and like we did when we were bezeling the cabochon make a little gap for the beads go down then go up between those two beads and through the second bead You'll be doing the same like when you are doing the base of the bezel. So another two beads. Again up through the middle and the second one. These you can add more tightly than when you are doing the bezel. Because we don't want any gaps between these two. Uh, between these beads so make them make the row nice and tight and continue like this until you have beads all along the cup chain now I will cut a piece of leather that I will uh, need so roughly like this Now again the glue, just slightly few dabs, you can use a toothpick to help you and spread the glue. Now put it on the leather push slightly and let it dry for a moment and now cut the leather again uh, so it has the same shape and size like the beading foundation it's 
So and now we will do this last row of uh, this last row of beads. Again, I will work with um, 11 o's and 15 o's, both of them, and I chose to add a bit of silver into this. So I will be working with the 11 o's crystal labrador full and the same 15 o's we used here. So like we did with the previous ring. I am going in between to uh, in between those two fabrics. I'm going out of the leather while hiding the knot between them. Then I pick up one eleven o, one fifteen o, one eleven o. Now you slide it down and like. 2 millimeters or 3 millimeters next to the first stitch. I'm going through the beading foundation right next to this row of golden beads and through the leather, finding the beads, and then up through the second 11 0. And now 115 0, 11 0, and the same from the top to bottom. And from the bottom to the top of the 11 0. And pull tight. And yet again, do this around the whole circle. Now also the gold pink ring is finished. I did these uh, the bezel here, the embellishments and glued down the ring base. Exactly the same like we did uh, on the green silver version. So now uh, what is uh, left to do is to tell you what uh, items I used. So I will start with the green version. So for the green version, I use 24 millimeter Lunas of Cabochon, in uh, which is the round uh, round type in lime color. The beads were uh, milky seed beads, two colors of 11 O's, crystal vitrail and crystal vitrail method, 15 O's, the favorite crystal Labrador full and four millimeter check faceted rounds the fire polished beads this is crystal etched vitriol four for the the ring base was this flowery type in gun metal color the beading foundation was uh, black and i used artificial leather as the backing material and for the pink version there was uh, the Luna Soft Cabochon, also 24 millimeters in the watermelon color. The ring base was antique copper. And the colors I used, the, this time I used three uh, milky 11 o's colors. Uh, the gold is Duracold Galvanized Gold. The pink was Duracold Galvanized Dark Coral and the silver Crystal Labrador Full. 15 o was Duracold Galvanized Hot Pink. Uh, beading foundation, I had a yellow color for my personal stash, but you can use a white one or some lighter color basically. So you can use beading foundation, lace stiff stuff and or other thick uh, material and for the back this is a gold art artificial leather then you will need size 10 or size 12 uh, beading needle a beading thread i used ko and i think nymo in silver and uh, you will also need glue some top quality glue which is transparent Oh, I also almost forgot for uh, the crystals. The crystals are Preciosa Cup Chain and this is crystal with the gold plated uh, chain. 
yeah that's it and the other tools i used are sharp scissors with uh, curved edge and pliers you need to cut the cup chain and also we can use these pliers to help you thread the needle so i believe that's everything i hope i didn't forget anything so thank you very much for watching i hope you had fun making these statement embroidered rings as i said you can you can use them as brooches as well or make a loop so you can wear them as a pendant you can hang a tassel from here you can wear them as earrings also this is quite versatile so you can just uh, use small cabochons bigger cabochons you can do anything so the number of beads if you are using like a peyote bezel use uh, even count otherwise it, the numbers doesn't really matter here this is pretty simple so i hope you had fun and don't forget to show us your rings or your pendants which are what you uh, made with this tutorial in our facebook group beading and jewelry making and thank you very much for watching